So this is a quick clip, like 45 seconds of a video. So how much of this, how many grams of sodium as I do I need to produce nitrogen gas? So this is in PowerPoint right now, all right? And I can highlight, underline, write, do whatever I want, just like you would in a class. about this, I don't know how much sodium as I have. This is what I need to solve for. And to do that, we need to do a molar conversion. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is we need to find moles. Give notes using, right away. And if you're looking at this page, gas, I don't remember exactly yeah. where this is, but there's space so for them. Underneath this question, everything I write. 25 degrees and 748. So remember, your ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. Rearrange this to solve for N, and we get N equals PV over RT. So to solve for moles... So anyways, I mean, it's still it's still weird for me. I don't like listening to it. And that's the hardest thing because I have to, when you're doing this, right? I was feeling a little sick that day. And so it's like, when you're solving for moles, you have to do this and that. And if you're thinking about doing this, you need to find a way to animate yourself like you would in a classroom. You need to use inflection. You need to crack jokes. I mean, it's it's really strange when you're, when you're thinking about it starting. And so if I look back at my unit one videos now, they're so boring. And I hate watching them. So what I'm going to do next year is I'm going to go back and start redoing them to, as I've learned about what works and what doesn't with kids. Um, but anyways, that's, that's typically what they look at. For my general chemistry, I try to keep these 10 to 12 minutes. After that, they just get bored and they stop watching and then they miss the end of, end of the, the video. Uh, for AP chemistry, when I start doing those, I'll probably shoot for 15 to 20 minutes with those because they're thinking at a higher level. There's more information I need to give them. Uh, I, I haven't gotten into that yet, but really 10 to 12 minutes seems to be the maximum. Uh, this particular unit I did, uh, I split into smaller chunks. Most of it is like seven to eight minutes, really. So they're very, very short, very compact. What, one idea per video is the other general guideline I get. So if you, if you want to teach... Um, I don't know, like if you're doing like nervous system, like one video would be like the brain. What does your brain do? <coughs> Another video might be how do your nerves, the peripheral nerves, like all your fingers, how does your skeletal muscles work with the nerves? So you want to split it up into very discrete segments instead of trying to do everything all at once. Uh, so the guided notes, I passed one out, but each unit has an accompanying note packet, and this includes the lecture, the notes, the worksheets, references, and everything. Uh, so everything that they see on this paper comes directly from the video, and everything I use in the video comes directly from this. They are integrated one-to-one, -one, right? There is no, I don't throw anything in the notes that isn't in the video, and I don't try, and I try not to use anything in the video that's not in the notes, because some, they'll, they'll get confused, like, what the heck is this? Where, where does this need to go? So really, it's very, very structured. And teaching sophomores, I need the structure for them. All right. Um, students organize all their material based on these packets. So really, I hole punch and staple everything. They put it in their binder chronologically. So when they're studying for their semester exams, they have semester one, semester two, just in order right there, all built for them, really. And they just fill in the, uh, the details. Um, I do include the worksheets. Um, I do copy, you know, three or four worksheets and put those at the end. I don't know if this is kind of hard to see, but down at the bottom here in this box, they know that this is the reference. So I give them the textbook reference if they're readers. I give them practice problems from the textbook if they like more practice. I give them the worksheets if they're worksheet doers. So I'm hitting four or five different um, learning styles all in one. They can hear it, they can see it, they can do it, they can read it, right? And then class time is that one-to-one -one inter, uh, intrapersonal intera interaction. Uh, so the web-based learning, how does that tie in? Well, students there are more comfortable online than before. We all know that. They're way better on computers than I am. Um, they're using the web every single day as a learning platform. If I say, what is this compound? Boom, Wikipedia. What is yeah. it? Right? Uh -huh. You know? They, so they need to learn how to sift through this information to figure out what's important. How does this tie into what Mr. Ben is teaching? What can I use? And that's hard to do. So what I'm trying to teach them as we go through this is the, their decision-making skills. If I give you a resource, I mean, I've done, you know, I've done my research. I know it's a good resource, but I still want them to question and say, why is this good? And if they can tell me why it's good, then I know they're learning it. So analytical thinking is, lead, is leading into higher order thinking, which is really the goal of every class that they should be taking, right? Uh, let's see, utilizing your web platforms, there are hundreds and hundreds out there. These are good ones. Uh, we all use Google Sites. High School has it set up. It's easy, you know, uh, fairly user-friendly. Um, Moodle, 
oh, I'm, I'm really frustrated because we got Moodle, but I, I can't really, uh, I don't know. Moodle is like an all-in-one awesome, like, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's a course management software. It's free. It, will, it, it goes onto a school server, so it's secure. And what it allows you to do is it, I would take my Google site and put it there, all of my worksheets, all of my handouts, all of my PowerPoints, all of my videos, everything, right into one place, hosted on the school's secure server. So if you're doing something that you don't want other teachers to use for whatever reason, if you're not into sharing information, um, then you put it on Moodle because kids need to log in to get in. Um, there are monitored discussion boards, so if you want to do a discussion post instead of having anyone be able to, to do it, Kids type into it right there. You get an email response when it comes. You can also do testing in Moodle, right? You can set up question <coughs> banks. You can even do calculation questions in Moodle. You just give it parameters for solving the questions. So for chemistry and math, I don't have to make answer keys anymore if we have Moodle. So that's something that I've been working with Stephen a lot on, and I know Scott and I have talked about it a few times, so hopefully that's something that the school will start to integrate. Um, I know TCIS uses Moodle, so if you, know, if you know people there, you can talk to them about it. But anyways, Moodle's great. Blogs and wikis, I do run a WordPress blog, um, and I use that as a quasi-portfolio, kind of throwing up things that I do, throwing up ideas or just technology that I find, open source stuff, really. But um, I know a lot of people use wiki spaces. I don't use that as much as I would like to, uh, but there's, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of resources out there. That's, an own pre that's a presentation in itself, so I'm not even going to try to get into that too much. But what I would say is you would, oops, hang on. So what I would say is pick... Pick two or three of them and just go with them and really focus on that. This year I focused on my Google site and I've really built it up into something that's self-functioning and self-running. And after I finish this year, all I need to do is maintenance and, and updates. Uh, my class is crazy. If you've ever walked in to find me during my class, it is just nuts, but it's so much fun. Uh, if you've never walked in, this is a typical day. Okay, so kids... Working together on floor, doing whatever they need to do. Labs are set up. So I've, most days I've got two, maybe three labs set up. Uh, groups working on their notes, working on labs, collaborating. I mean, I'm just walking around with a video camera right now. Like, I don't have to monitor the class because they all know what they should be doing. Okay. Watching the notes. So he... I don't know, something came up last night at home, couldn't watch his notes, didn't miss class because it's still there. He can watch it when he's ready. So feel free to like just drop in. And I can give you my class schedule if you want to see it. But I don't have to sit down and say, stop chewing gum, stop throwing paper, stop poking your neighbor. Because they're all working, they're directing their own learning. I just give them the tools to do that. Um, 